then there's tension again he feels devalued and disrespected you get in the car um, or the wife gets in the car and she's just looking out the window at the scenery that she's not enjoying but she's kind of just making him know that you should have gone with my decision um, good morning, afternoon or evening, loved of God. I hope that you are keeping well. If you eradicate these four words from your vocabulary, then you will improve your marriage straight away. And these four words are... Do you know what they are? I'll give you a few seconds to have a guess. They are, I told you so. These four words are very destructive and they bring about death into a marriage as opposed to life. And we want our words to bring about life. The power of life and death is in the tongue. And so we want to use our tongue to produce a life praise god and i want to share with you an example now say you and your husband are going out for a meal to a restaurant and you have somewhere that you want to go and he has somewhere that he wants to go and the place that you want to go to you've been there before the food is delicious the customer service is really nice and um, you enjoy even the drive going to that restaurant and your husband's found somewhere online and he wants to go there and you've both never been there before but he wants to try something new and so you agree and when you're going there you have to drive and you're going through these neighborhoods and they are not good neighborhoods the things that you are exposed to are not good then you reach there it's so hard to find parking and you have to pay an arm and a leg <laughs> to pay to park then there's this long queue and you have to wait 45 minutes just to be seated then when you are seated the customer service is not good you have to flag down somebody just to get their attention <laughs> um to get served and then when they do take your order it takes another 45 minutes for your food to come and they've given you the wrong food then they um give you the they start um, they cook your food again this time the right food and that takes another half an hour and then the food isn't nice and um, the people that are there the type of customers that they have uh, are not well mannered they barge into you they don't say sorry the tables are close to each other so you can hear literally people sound like chewing in your ear <laughs> And you're just thinking, I wish, I wish we went to the place where I said, see, I was so right. We should have gone where I wanted to go. I told you so. And you may not actually say, I told you so. You could say, see, we should have gone to the place where I wanted to go. Or you could say, you might not even say it to him, but you just say it out loud, knowing that he would hear, I wish we went to the place where we went to and without saying i told you so that is what you are saying and it ruins the atmosphere maybe he will just be quiet for the rest of the night he already knows that he's made a bad decision so he doesn't need um that man in that situation doesn't need his wife to say that he is made um that the decision he made wasn't the the best decision um and that it would have been better to go where you where the wife wanted to go um and then maybe he does say something and then it kind of goes into a bit of an argument um and people as well because you're so close they can hear and even if he doesn't say anything just the fact of you saying i told you so in 
whichever phrase it comes out in now he you know feels disrespected and feels devalued um it brings death into that marriage not in the sense that the marriage is going to end but it isn't something that is bringing life into the marriage it isn't something that is building the marriage up um or scenario two in that option well it's still the same scenario but option two is that you then say can i taste your food <laughs> hoping that it would be better and he kind of you know laughs and know, knowing that his food doesn't taste good and allows you to try it and then the wife is saying do you um want to try my food <laughs> Uh, or he asks to try your food and you both just laugh about the situation both knowing exactly what you're laughing about because the whole experience has just been so bad but it's just something that you just laugh off god is still good praise god um then the bill comes and the food is extortionate itself and, and they're, then they're charging um 10 percent extra for a service tip and and then you're kind of thinking you didn't even provide a good service but you know you just laugh the whole situation off and then you leave and with option a when the i told you so comes out then there's tension again he feels devalued and disrespected you get in the car um, or the wife gets in the car and she's just looking out the window at the scenery that she's not enjoying but she's kind of just making him know that you should have gone with my decision um, then you get home and if there's children they can pick up on the atmosphere that mummy's not happy with daddy or daddy and mummy are not talking really um, and that can really affect them and go on to be bad practices and bad characteristics that they display in their marriage if they're not healed from it themselves and then there's maybe more arguing in the home or more silence um and then there's this tension still in the atmosphere and you go to bed and there's still this tension you're almost falling off the bed trying to be as far away as possible <laughs> the wife so i know i'm interchanging saying you and the wife but the wife is doing that and then <laughs> and then there's just all this tension and you wake up in the morning and it could still be there but with option two you know you're laughing about it you get in the car and you're both just laughing and thinking i'm never going back to that place again you start talking about other things maybe try to take a different route home see if you can get another scenery maybe you don't finish the food and you just go somewhere else which is nice um get a nice dessert a healthy dessert <laughs> <laughs> and um oh just get something else to eat because you really couldn't eat that food at all so you maybe even end up going you know he surprises you and drives to the place where you wanted to go in the first place um and then you go home and there's just a lovely atmosphere and it's filled with love and joy and peace and the children um are experiencing that love and peace and maybe there's no children but there's still a lovely atmosphere and then you go to bed and there's no tension and there's just love and joy and peace in the atmosphere and which option is better that is kind of a uh, um Oh, what's that word called i can't remember now rhetorical rhetorical question because it is option two definitely option two is so much better and you can and you can still speak life in that situation and option two i never did say but you could say thank you so much for taking me out tonight um um Thank you so much for the drive. You know, just look for the good in the situation. Um, and just be like, oh, God is good that you know, he blessed us with enough money to be able to not finish our food because we don't like it. We don't want to be wasteful, but if something really isn't nice, maybe it's undercooked. We definitely you know, shouldn't poison ourselves at the expense of <laughs> trying to n not be wasteful. That's not what God wants. And 
you can have undercooked food uh, at a place or maybe you see the, the waiters sneezing and coughing and not putting their hands by their mouth or you kind of want to be cautious of eating that food um, so we can bring life into that situation by our tongue by the words that we saw and now he feels respected he feels valued he still knows that he made <laughs> the bad decision and i don't even like calling it a bad decision but he knows that yeah well the decision that he made it never ended up being a great experience i would say but um now he doesn't really feel that bad about it because you know you still was his peace you still brought joy to that situation and life to that situation and those four words I told you so are so destructive and so I encourage you to not use those words or not use phrases or even actions that are associated with those words no silent treatment no kind of you know change of tone or voice um, and no phrases associated with I told you so like we should have gone to um, where I wanted to go and you will have a better marriage I want you to have the best marriage possible and our amazing kind giving father in heaven wants you to have the best marriage possible he wants your marriage to be filled with love to be filled with joy to be filled with peace and so i encourage you if you are somebody who is prone to saying i told you so um pray in the morning before anything happens pray and ask god to help you not to say i told you so and this is not just good in marriages this is good in every relationship with your children with your parents your grandparents with your siblings with your you know, relatives extended relatives with the brethren in in the church saying i told you so is destructive in any type of relationship and you can dramatically improve any type of relationship by not using those words or phrases with those words or actions associated with those words and please when you stop using those words and god blesses your marriage please do come back and testify share in the comments how god has blessed your marriage how your marriage has improved by removing those words of death from your marriage and give god the glory give god the praise and encourage the sisters who are listening to this video and reading the comments praise god and if you have already stopped using those words um before you saw this video please do testify as well and share in the comments how you um, remove those words from your um from your relate from maybe it's not just your marriage from your marriage or another type of relationship and how that relationship improved how we increase the love in that relationship how we increase the joy how we increase the peace how it increased you to um, be a better person because it does make us a better person when we remove words of death from our vocabulary praise God and so I hope you have a wonderful marriage full of love and grace and peace and joy and righteousness praise God